So what can I do here with this? I'm going to wipe the whole slate clean and start from this again. What can I do before I go to T results in order to make this something that's more workable? Yeah. On the numerator, add to its attempt. Yeah, very good. So uh, a few people suggested this. And this is helpful because when you have the degree being the same, the degree being the same, and all that's different is a constant. That's kind of a little bit of a clue to you. Hey, can you get this, can you reshape this, just mold it a little bit so it will divide through, okay? So if I write plus two, minus two, like so, you can see I can separate this numerator into two pieces, yeah? So what I'm gonna get here is that first piece is two plus sine theta on two plus sine theta. So that's the integral of one with respect to theta, yeah? Then what you get over here is take away, take away what? I can take out that two if I want. Two. Integral of, what, get less, what gets left there is one. a one on two plus sine theta. The denominator stays the same. Now, I don't know what this is yet, but at least what I have done is take a more complicated problem and sort of reshape it so it's the same magnitude of difficulty as ones that I already know I can do. Okay, so that I think was the hardest leap, like leap, inverted commas. The rest of this, well, let's see what happens, because it's still not nice and tidy and neat. There's still some hard things to it. Okay, so uh, what is the integral of 1 with respect to theta? It's theta. Oh, you don't know. It's theta. <laughs> what, what variable am I dealing with here? Okay, now when you have a look at the right-hand side, now I'm ready to deal with that through these two results. Okay, so I'm going to do the substitution up here, and then I'm going to simplify it over there. So what have I got here? Minus 2, integral of 1 on t plus what? Yep. D. Now, hold on. I need to change. I need to change the variable integration, right? So maybe I'll put it. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll just put it here. 2 on 1 plus t squared. Yep. Uh, times dt on d theta, d theta. Cancel, cancel. Yep. Yeah, so there's a, there's a bit more cancelling that I can do here, right? What else could I do? What other options have I got? Yeah, good. So I can see uh, this two and this pair of twos here. I mean, there's two twos there. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe I should take this one because it's inside the integrand. So if I cancel that, that means I can cancel that and this becomes a one. Okay. And you can see here, oh, look, I already have a one plus t squared. When you write it like this, it's, you're just multiplying through. Okay. So what am I going to end up with? I've got theta hanging out the front, don't forget that guy. We don't usually have him, but don't, make, don't let him disappear. 2 over 2 integral of what? Here we go. 1 on t squared plus t plus 1. Um, that's what I got from multiplying by the 1, and that's what I got the denominators cancelled with respect to t. Okay? We're almost there. Now, what, what are we going to do with this? Okay. Now, it's not immediately obvious because, again, if I say go like this and expand this out, that's, well, I'll just put it in order. Yeah, like, what is that? What is that closest to? So this is closest to 10 inverse. Now, how do I identify that? If I were just to cover that, right, then I can see, oh, look, that's a standard form. So the difference of having that there just means I need to just shift this around a little bit and I'll get a standard form. There's a couple of ways you can do this. The way that I ended up doing it was I completed the square, okay? which some of you I know have attempted. It looks like it'll be messy, but stay with it. Okay? Um, what I've got is on the denominator, if I've got t squared plus t, how do I complete the square? What do I do with this thing? Yeah, I'm going to halve this coefficient, which then, then becomes a half, and then I'm going to square that. So I add a quarter. So that now, that's a square. Agree? Then, of course, I've got three quarters left over in order to complete the one. Yep. You too. Happy so far? Two lots of... Now, what is the actual square when I find three? T plus a half, yep. Squared <laughs> plus three quarters. Now, that three quarters, I actually will write it in a slightly different way as well. It's also, I want that to be a square too, right? What's the square root of three quarters. Cool. Okay. Now I could then go and say, okay, let u equal t plus a half and then go ahead and do the substitution. But in this case, because my use of reverse chain rule is going to be nice, 
the coefficient there, the derivative of the inside, which I'm going to need for reverse chain rule, is just 1. So I'm just going to just, just go for it, okay? This is theta minus 2. This is something squared plus root 3 on 2 all squared, right? So this is going to be 1 on a. Do you remember the 1 on a? Now, what's a in this case? It's root 3 on 2. That's why I put it in the brackets and squared it. So this is 1 on a. There's a. 10 inverse of what's inside the brackets. So usually this would be an x squared. So we'd have x on a here, but I don't have x. I've got t plus a half. t plus a half. And again, that's also divided by a. Okay, so root 3 on 2. And now I'm, um, yeah, I have, I've integrated already. So now I'm pretty much almost there. Let's just tidy up a little bit. Um, you've got theta minus... That four is gonna. That two is gonna come into the numerator, become a four. Four on root three. Ten on. Okay, what's in here? Um, I'm gonna do two things. So firstly, I am gonna replace the t with ten of theta on two, which is what I said. And at the same time, that dividing by two underneath the denominator is actually multiplying through by two. So I'm gonna write that like this: one on root three, ten inverse. Uh, sorry, two ten inverse. X on two. It's just ten. It's just ten, not ten. Oh, sorry. Of course, it's ten x on two. Plus one. Oh, it's theta. I'm not even x's am I? Okay. Let's get them. Very wrong twice. Okay. With my constant right on the end. What do you think? In the answers, they convert the theta. Yes. Okay. So a weird, a weird thing they do is the answer actually says from memory, I think they've got 2 tan inverse of tan theta on 2. Now I hope you can see that's theta, <laughs> right? Um, I guess what they've done is they've got it all in terms of, uh, I don't know, like this is so vastly inferior to this. I'm like, why, why do you do this? Okay. Um, but yeah, what they've done, you can see why they've done it. What they've got is this is really 2 tan inverse of t, right? So they've got a, somewhere in here, they've got a 1 on 1 plus t squared. Yep, that's what they've got in there. So they've done, they've separated their fractions out in a, so it's, I'm assuming it's coming from here. They've separated their fractions. Yeah, they've done partial fractions. You remember we dismissed this before? But you end up in the same spot, okay? However, I will say, I mean, I think I kind of like our solution better. I, I think dealing with this, like is vastly superior and quicker and more efficient than dealing with partial fractions. You don't have to convert it exactly right. You're like, cool. It's it's obvious that that's what it is, rather than oh, what about domain, blah blah blah. No, that's it. 